The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. This is Monica Byrne with SWK Technologies. I am a senior consultant here at SWK, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar on inventory costing and pricing in Sage 100. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and present to you a PowerPoint of some information about costing and pricing in Sage 100. And then after that, I'll show you some examples actually in my Sage 100 demo environment. And then beyond that, I'll ask if you have any questions um, or we'll go through any questions that have come in through the chat. So please feel free to use the chat on your GoToMeeting or on the meeting um, panel and ask me any questions that you may have. And at, towards the end, I'll start to answer those questions and respond um, to those as they come in. So I'm going to get, get started here. <clears throat> so welcome, as I said, my name is Monica Byrne. I'm a senior consultant here at SWK. Just wanted to share a picture of myself so that if you don't know me, you can put a face with a name. I've been with the company with SWK for 12 years and working with the Sage 100 product for almost 15 years now. Over these years, I've helped hundreds of clients use Sage 100 to benefit their business. But during this time, I have been asked repeatedly, I can't even count how many times, where did this price come from or where did this cost come from? So it's a common question we see all the time as consultants at SWK is trying to figure out why, why did Sage behave in this way? And there is a specific order to it. There is a reason that it happens. And there is a way for you to be able to go ahead and um, determine where those prices and costs came from and hopefully maybe avoid an uh, SWK help desk call or something like that. <clears throat> so on the agenda today, we're going to talk about um, this inventory screens for costing and pricing. We're going to talk about the Stage 100 cost hierarchy the Sage 100 price hierarchy. So costing, we're talking on the purchase order side or on the vendor side, where is the cost determined? And on the pricing side, we're talking about on a sales order, what's the price our customer is going to get? What are we selling it for? We're going to look at some examples, like I said, and then we're going to have, have some questions. <clears throat> so let's get started looking at the places where prices and costs are stored in Sage 100. So you've probably noticed there's a lot of different places in Sage 100 where costs and prices can reside. And it's important to understand where they are and how they relate, specific to that pricing and costing hierarchy I mentioned before. So we know what comes into play first or where does Sage look first. <clears throat> Here you see on the main tab of item maintenance, we have costs and pricing stored in a row towards the bottom of the screen. Depending on certain factors we'll discuss today, certain costs and prices from here will be used. <clears throat> Next is the item maintenance screen. And this is access, it's actually the item vendor maintenance screen. And this is accessed by clicking the more button in the top right of the item screen and selecting vendors. The last cost for the vendor for this item is stored here. Finally, if we're looking at a LIFO, FIFO, lot or serial item, you will see the cost for each tier here on the cost detail tab in item maintenance. <clears throat> We see pricing in item pricing maintenance as well. This is accessed from item maintenance by clicking the more button and then pricing. Another field related to pricing is the price level in customer maintenance. So we're starting to develop all these places where we can kind of mesh these prices together or make determinations on prices. So you'll see in customer maintenance here on the under the data entry side on the left-hand side, this particular customer ABF is under price level A. Um, so this can relate to our item pricing maintenance. You'll see on the left-hand side, there's a price level as well. So there's lots, lots of ways all of this is tied together and we're gonna discuss all of those today. <clears throat> You'll also see price code maintenance here. This is where we have another level on which we can set pricing. This is located under the inventory management setup area called price code maintenance. Please note the price level can work in conjunction with item pricing maintenance as well as price code maintenance. Additionally, price codes are associated with an item on the main tab in item maintenance. 
This should become clearer when we look at some examples later in this webinar. So costing. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the costing side of things for a few minutes. What determines the cost of our items? As we just saw, an item's cost can come from multiple places in stage 100. So we're gonna talk here about purchase order costing. So when we create a purchase order and we're gonna be sending it to a vendor, where does that costing from? And the, come from? And the first item here is a key, vendor-specific pricing. So keep that in the back of your head because vendor specific pricing is high on the hierarchy as far as pricing or costing is concerned for our vendor. So this is one of the keys um, from our webinar today so that you can see, so that you can always look there. If you have a problem and you can't figure out where a price is coming on a purchase order, vendor specific pricing is usually a good place to check. When um, and also, we can kind of simplify this a little bit because when looking at costing in Stage 100 related to purchase orders, there's really only two factors, this vendor-specific pricing and the item's valuation. So it's going to look at the item's valuation to see which cost to use on item maintenance, but then it's also going to look at vendor-specific pricing if that's in place, and that vendor-specific pricing is going to trump your item valuation pricing. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit more since it is a key about the vendor specific pricing. We can set vendor specific pricing in vendor price level maintenance. That's located under the purchase order setup menu. This pricing can be set by vendor, product line, or item code. So I'm gonna just warn you right now to be careful of setting a vendor price level because that applies to all items in that price, or for all items actually that you purchase from that vendor. That's one of the key um, things and I'll show you in our demonstration in the actual software a little later. That's one of the key things that I see frequently is someone will call and say, hey, my every time I enter a purchase order for a specific vendor, no matter what item I put in, I'm getting the same cost. And that would be the reason and I'll show you how that works after. <clears throat> here's, a, here's an example of vendor price level set up by product line. So when creating a purchase order, this is the first place Stage 100 looks for costing. So vendor price level maintenance is the first thing, and then it goes on to the inventory valuation to determine the cost. So this is the highest priority in our costing hierarchy. This is key because sometimes we inadvertently set up a flat vendor cost. This is the number one reason we see incorrect costs on purchase orders, receipts, and other purchase order entries. And we'll look at an example, like I said, little later so it becomes a little clearer and you can see what you're looking for. <clears throat> the next priority in our hierarchy, as I've mentioned before, is an item valuation method. As you may know, there are six valuation methods in Stage 100. Here's how they work. Standard cost items. Items with this valuation use the standard cost listed in item maintenance, assuming no vendor-specific costing is set up. What if the cost is zero? So let's say you go, it's a standard cost item, the valuation for the item is standard cost, you know to enter a purchase order for it, but the standard cost is zero. If it is, then the system will look to the last cost. So if that standard cost is zero, it's gonna say, do I have a last cost? If the last cost is zero, the warehouse average cost, um, it'll look to the warehouse average cost, and then if that is zero, the item's average cost. Eventually, if it, if it meets up with zeros all the way down the line, you're gonna end up with a zero cost there. But this is the hierarchy that it goes through, the logic that it goes through for a standard cost item when it's trying to find cost. <clears throat> for our average valuation, items with this valuation first look to use the warehouse average cost for the item. If this is zero, it looks to the item's average cost, then the last cost, and then the standard cost for the item. So you see how it's going. If there's not a cost in the first place that it expects it to be for that particular valuation, Sage is gonna move on to the next and next and next area to see where it can find a cost. So a lot of times, let's say you have an average cost item and the average cost is zero, um, but say your standard cost is incorrect or high, you know, very high or something, Sometimes clients will call and say, hey, the cost on this item is so high, why? You know, that's not what I pay for the item. And typically it's because it's, let's say it was an average cost item and the average cost is zero, and then there was an incorrect cost and standard cost. So you just have to know how to follow that flow down through, I guess. <clears throat> 
The last four valuations in stage 100, LIFO, FIFO, lot or serial, behave the same way. So this first looks to the vendor's last cost. So in item maintenance, under the more tab, there's a vendor option, and in that vendor option, it'll show you that particular vendor's last cost. If that is zero, or let's say you haven't purchased from that vendor before, so there's no vendor record in there for this particular vendor, then the last cost of the item will be used. So it's gonna look at item maintenance, the last cost there. And then if that is zero, it's gonna look to the standard cost, then the averages, then the warehouse's average cost, so the warehouse that you're purchasing for, and then the item's average cost. <clears throat> and keep in mind, we're talking about purchase orders at this point. So this is where it's finding the costing when you create a purchase order. So this is kind of the troubleshooting you can do if you create a pur purchase order and you think your cost is incorrect. So just to recap, as it's important, vendor-specific pricing always takes priority on purchase orders. Then the valuation, that's it. We're gonna look at some examples of these later so that you can see how that works uh, when we go into the software. Now we're gonna to switch to take a look at cost used on a sales order. So the cost used on a sales order, remember your valuation. So as we talked about in the purchase, um, purchasing side of things, the sales order uses the valuation for cost, for always uses the valuation for the cost on the sales order. So if it's a standard cost item, it's going to use the standard cost. Average cost is going to use the average cost from item, item maintenance. And then FIFO, LIFO, lot, and serial, of course, are going to use those, the tiers that we talked about that are created when you purchase an item through FIFO, LIFO, lot, and, lot, and serial. <clears throat> um, the first thing to remember, again, is that it's based on the item valuation. So just keep that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind with an average cost valuation, it's going to use the average cost first for the warehouse and then the average cost on the main tab in item maintenance. This cost is a rolling average of the cost of an item maintained by the system. So one key to average cost is that it's, that it's maintained by the warehouse. Each warehouse item combination can have its own average cost. Um, and as we talked about before, FIFO and LIFO, they're managed similar, similarly in page 100. For this valuation, the system records the actual cost of items when they're received in. Then when selling them, the item's cost comes from the next available cost tier. If the item is FIFO, the first tier is in our relief first. If the items are LIFO, the last tier is in our relief first. For lot or serial valuations, behaves slightly differently. The actual cost is also maintained when items are received based on either the lot or serial number. Of course, a lot applies to a group of items associated with the same number, and a serial item means you have one serial number per item. When sold, the user has to choose which lot or serial number is being sold, and the appropriate actual cost of that item is used. So it's important to know your valuation if you're trying to um, determine where your costing has come from. <clears throat> Let's take a look, uh, quick look at pricing um, now that we've kind of gone through the cost side. <clears throat> Each time an item code is entered on the sales order or invoice, invoice, Stage 100 checks the customer, date, item, and quantity to determine which pricing method to use. This establishes the unit price that will display for the item. However, the unit price can be manually overridden by the user. So we've seen that, I'm sure you've seen that if you work in sales order or in a sales order invoice, those prices can be overridden. <clears throat> but this is um, the hierarchy that Sage is gonna go through to determine where that pricing is coming from. So here's the Sage 100 pricing hierarchy from highest to lowest priority. And I just wanna mention now is it's a good time. I'm going to, after the webinar, we're gonna send out the PowerPoint and the well, the, actually the recording of the webinar. And I'm also gonna send you two articles from Sage. One of them is the item pricing hierarchy and one of them is the item cost hierarchy. So although I'm going through them here and it, it, it may be kind of quick, I'm gonna send you out that documentation so you can see and have in your hands what those hierarchies are. <clears throat> so as far as pricing in Sage 100, so we're talking for pricing on a sales order, what's our price to our customer? Um, and we're gonna go from highest to lowest priority here. Promotion pricing comes in first. In Sage 100, we can mark items on sale for a specific date, 
or a set of dates, et cetera. If a sales promotion is in effect for the current date and the promotion price is less than the calculated price, this will be used. So when you go into sales order, sales order is automatically going to calculate the price that it, it should be, of course, of the item. And then it's going to start looking at these items in, in the hierarchy. So it's going to look at promotion pricing first. If there's nothing in promotion pricing, it's going to go on to the next thing. So the next one is contract pricing. And when Sage says contract pricing, they mean customer specific pricing. So a customer price schedule can be set up in item maintenance by clicking the more button and choosing pricing. So that's what we're talking about there. The next priority would be item, would be item specific pricing or item pricing based on the price level. For the item based on the customer price level. So in customer maintenance on the additional tab, we can set a price level for a customer and then we can set item specific pricing for that price level by selecting the more button and then pricing an item in, in item maintenance. And then additionally, we can have item specific pricing based not on a, not based on a price level. It would be set up in the same area and that would be the next priority. Another option in Sage 100 for pricing is to use price codes. And this is the next priority in the pricing, um, in the pricing hierarchy. A price code is set up in inventory setup price code maintenance. A price level can be assigned here in conjunction with the price code. And remember that price level is assigned on the customer level. So a price code with a price level would be the next priority. And then the price code with no price level would follow. So you can set up a price code that has no price level for customers who don't have a price level assigned. And then you can set up a price code that has price levels for those customers that have price levels assigned. Finally, if there's none of the pricing mentioned above, so if we don't have any promotion pricing, no contract pricing, no item-based pricing, no price codes, um, the standard price from item, item maintenance is then going to be used. And Sage looks at it exactly in this hierarchy, so it goes through the steps just like we did, just did. Is there a promotion? Is there contract pricing? And so forth. <clears throat> okay. So I am going to switch and we will look at some examples in my Sage 100. So just give me one second here to close down my presentation. And we will look at my Sage 100 environment. <clears throat> okay, so here's my Sage 100. I'm gonna go through some examples and just show you how I would determine where costing and pricing is coming from. So if, if you're in a similar situation, you can see the process that you go to to try, try to determine where the cost or price comes from. So I'm gonna go into purchase order first and we'll look at the cost side from that perspective. So I'm gonna go into purchase order entry and we're gonna look at a, a, at a specific purchase order number. Okay, so this purchase order number, when I'm looking or evaluating costing information, trying to figure out where a cost came from, there's a few things that I kind of keep in the back of my head as I look at a purchase order. So the first thing is gonna be the vendor number. So this is 01 Container Corporation. So I wanna keep that in mind as I go through and evaluate where my pricing is come, coming from. So on the line, you'll see that I've ordered this four drawer letter file. Um, <clears throat> and the price, the cost that I have is $76 76.313, I guess, and I'm ordering six of those. So if I go ahead and look at this particular item in item maintenance, and I'll open that up here, you'll see that um, this is a FIFO item. Um, my last cost for this item was $83.50. My average cost for this item is 83.497, and my standard cost is 82.5. And I'm looking here and I'll say, wow, this doesn't match. This unit cost does not match any of those. So what I might do then is go over to this more button and look at my vendors. And when I look at my vendors, here's my zero one container. I see that, but I don't have any costing in here either. So I wanna know where is Sage getting this costing from? So there's a couple places that we can evaluate 
are actually one place other than looking at the vendor level that we discussed during the webinar. And I'll give you guys a second to think of it, and then I will go there. So under um, inventory management in the setup area, oh, actually, sorry, it's not inventory management, under purchase order in the setup area, there's a vendor price level maintenance. So if nothing is making sense on my costing, and I'm not sure where it's coming from, my next place to check would be here. So I'm just gonna pull, pull my purchase order and item maintenance back on the screen, and we're gonna look at our vendor price level maintenance. So here under vendor price level maintenance, the next thing I'm gonna do is say, hey, for this vendor, 01 container, C-O-N-T, do I have any vendor specific pricing set up? So I would typically use this vendor price list button. So this is our vendor price list lookup. And I see that I do for my 01 container. I have something uh, for the product line W, F, and A. And you'll see if I order from one to five, I have a 5% cost discount. And if I order from six to quantity of 10, I have a 7.5% cost discount. <clears throat> so the next thing I would go back and check and say, where is, um, um, what product line does this particular item belong to? And if I go through here, you'll see on my left-hand side towards the bottom that this particular item does belong to my WFNA product line. So very simply, Sage is calculating the price um, from the original, from the standard cost or the cost to our vendor, from the standard cost, I get a 7.5% discount. And that's why it's coming up with the $76.313. So once you know what you're looking for, it becomes a little quicker to try to evaluate these, this kind of information. <clears throat> All right, let's look at another purchase order and we'll, that has a different scenario, and we'll see what that looks like. So this one is for IBM Corporation. So you'll see, if I look at this one, IBM Corporation, if I go to my lines tab, you'll see I have an item code here, and my cost is $500, <clears throat> one of them at $500. So let's look at item maintenance. Of course, you would probably have an idea what you expect the cost to be, so you would know if it was off, but we'll just take a look at it here so we can see. So we see here that our standard cost is $15.75. Wow, we're pretty, we're pretty far off, right? Because we put in a quantity of one and we have a unit cost of $500. So here's another little, um, uh, something that I didn't mention in the presentation but wanted to mention to you here. Another thing to take into account is your unit of measure. So you'll see here on the top of this particular item, my standard unit of measure is each. So that's how I count it. That's how it's recorded in, in item maintenance. So this, this is an each cost. Um, our, my average cost is an each cost as well. These are each prices over here on the left-hand side. But I'm actually purchasing this by a case. So when I purchase this by a case, there's 100 in my case. So I can expect 100 times one of these costs to be the cost that's used for my purchase order and purchase order entry. However, I'm seeing that that is not the case. So I'm buying technically 100 of these and it's coming through at $500 for the unit cost. <clears throat> so let's take a look and see why. Remember, if we don't see the cost here, the other place to look on the costing side is to our vendor pricing maintenance. So I'm gonna go back here and open our vendor price level maintenance again. Pull my purchase order back here so we can see everything on one screen. And then I'll go ahead and do a lookup. And now I'm looking for the IBM Corporation. So that's who this purchase order is to. And I'm going to go ahead and look at this IBM Purchase Corder Corporation, IBM Corporation, in vendor price level maintenance. And you'll see that for this particular item code, 2480-8-50, I actually have a standard cost of $5 when I order it from this vendor, no matter what my quantity is. So there aren't even any quantity breaks in there. Of course, I'd like to purchase this all the time from that vendor, that would make the most sense, right? <clears throat> so that's where I would find that particular cost. But just keep in mind that unit of measure converter, conversion factor because that can certainly throw you off when you're looking at 
at costing and why it's different from item maintenance. The last one, oh, and keep in mind in that price level maintenance, remember, it can be set by the vendor, it can be set by the product line, or it can be set by the item. So there's lots of ways to set it up, and that's why sometimes it gets confusing to find that the appropriate costing information. So now I'm going to go ahead and look at one more purchase order for you guys. So this one is 10068, and let's take a look at this one. So this one's Stephen's Supply. <clears throat> So you'll see here, Stephen Supply is my vendor. And when I go to the lines, I'm putting in multiple different items. And every time I put in an item, it's coming across at the same unit cost. Now, if I look at any of these items in item maintenance, my cost is not going to be a dollar. So here, you know, my cost is, is up there, $137. If I look at one of my other items um, in item maintenance, we're gonna see that the cost is not the same. And it doesn't matter at this point what cost I put in for this particular vendor or what item I put in for this particular vendor, it's always going to come through at a dollar cost. So you'll see that one originally is $100. Oh, and this one, this one is $100 actually because it has a unit of, of measure conversion. But we'll go ahead and put another item in here and you'll see that it's always coming in at a dollar. So no matter what I do, the pricing comes in at a dollar. This is one of the most common questions I get from clients. They'll call and ask me this question constantly. Why am I seeing on my purchase order only one cost coming through no matter what I order from the vendor? And the key to this is vendor price level maintenance too. So remember, if the answer is not an item maintenance for a cost, where do you look? You look for vendor price level maintenance. So if I go to vendor price level maintenance, and I do a lookup on this 01STEV, Stephen Supply, you'll see that everything for Stephen Supply, because this is vendor pricing, is set to a dollar. And that's why I'm getting that on my purchase order. The reason that this is so common to get to and so why we get so many calls on this particular item is because you can very easily add a vendor price level without even, you know, someone comes in here and they're playing with it, it defaults to vendor, and then I can accept this. Now this one, because I didn't put a cost in here, it, but it's gonna give me a warning and I was able to close it anyway. So now you'll see I automatically have one in here for this Southwest distribution. So it's very easy if you go in to see what vendor price level maintenance is, is about to save one of those with a really odd cost, to save a vendor price level costing, it's very easy to do. So I would keep an eye on those. <clears throat> Okay, so that's it on the costing side, for example. We're gonna go over to the sales order side and look at pricing and costing there for our customers. So keep in mind, remember, on the costing side for a vendor, the two places to look. You're gonna look at vendor maintenance. You're, well, actually three, I should say. You're gonna look at vendor maintenance. You're gonna look at the vendor button, of, you know, the vendor um, option under the more button in item maintenance, because you can see the vendor's last cost there. Or you're gonna look at vendor price level maintenance. Those are the only places to really find those costs that are going to be on a purchase order. So knowing that, you should be able to evaluate and find the reason for any price on your purchase order. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the prices and costs on a sales order and how those are determined. So if I go into, let's go into sales order entry here and we'll look at one particular one. So we're going to look at order number 178. <clears throat> This is for my customer, 01ABF. When I go to the lines, they're ordering this two-drawer file cabinet. Uh, they're ordering one of those, and their price is $79.80. So when I look at this item in item maintenance, we're going to see here, okay, it should not be $79.80. Um, it should be $84. My standard price is $84. So that's what I ex would expect to see if there's no other options set up in our pricing hierarchy. So the other thing I might do is go over here and say, okay, do we have pricing set up? Or we, do we have customer specific pricing for this item? And I would go in here and I would scroll through. Now we do have item pricing set up. So for this item, no matter who buys it, because we don't have a price level assigned, from one to four, it should be $84, um, five to nine, 81.48 and so forth. 
So that's not the price we're getting. We're getting $79.80. So we ruled out item pricing maintenance. The other option we can look at is the customer. So we can say, hey, is there a customer price level involved here? So we're gonna go to our customer, 01ABS, go to the additional tab, and on the additional tab, I see um, that they do have a price level one. So now I didn't see any price levels set up in the item maintenance under pricing, so I didn't see anything associated with this item for price levels. But one other place I could check is under inventory management setup, I can look at price code maintenance. So under price code maintenance, I can see, and this is related to the item too, because the price code is assigned to the item. So the item is under a standard price code. So that could help us identify something. So if I go to price code maintenance, and I, let me accept this here and do a lookup, I can find my standard pricing. And if I'm a price level one, what do I get here? So from one to four, I get a 10% discount. So that would be $8.40 off of my $84. So I can go ahead and look at my sales order again and say, is that our answer? So when I look at my answer, that's not really our answer either. Something different is going on here. And the final place, which is the top of the pricing hierarchy, and some of you are probably, um, are probably noticing your head already from what we went through. The other place to look is sales promotion. So if I look at the sales promotion on this, you'll see that under this particular item, I have a Memorial Day sale going on um, from 5-15-2020 to 5-31-2020, and there's a 5% discount on that. So I have a sales promotion set up for this particular item, and that's actually where it's getting the pricing from. You'll see I'm within, my order date is within that time frame. So that's the first one. Let's look at another sales order here and see if we can determine where this information comes from. So sales order 179. <clears throat> so sales order 179, we're gonna show the price level on price code, we're gonna show the price level related to price code maintenance. So you'll see here um, that same item on this particular item, and I'm actually outside of the time frame. I have a different date than my time frame for my sale, so I know that that's not affected. Uh, but I am getting a price of $75.60. So I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate this customer. Again, this customer is 01 ABF. I'm gonna take a look and see what kind of price code they're under. They're under, oops, we gotta go to tab two, our additional tab. They're under a price code one, or a price level one. So I would actually look in item maintenance to see if this particular item had something related to that price level one in the price um, in the price setup, and I don't see, so this is the ABF, the price level one, $75.60. Now this is what's set up under the price code. So you would see this under price code maintenance, but you can also do a price lookup right in here from sales order entry, helps me determine where that price is coming from. Next one we'll look at is sales order 180. And sales order 180 is a different customer, our 01 ABS. When I go to the lines, we're looking at a different item as well than we have before. So this is another two drawer letter file, but a different one. And we're coming up with a price of $82. So if I go ahead and look at item maintenance for this, particular item, you're gonna see my price is typically $87. So if I was trying to determine where the price came from for this customer, I would go to the I would go to the customer, look and see if they have a price level. But I would also look under more in pricing and I can see my pricing item pricing maintenance here. So now here I can start to look through is there a customer price schedule for this particular customer? And there is. So this is my 01 ABS. And for this particular item, if they buy one to 10, they get a price of $82. Now keep in mind, we've been talking about the price side of the sales order, but there's also the cost side that comes into play too. So when we look at the costing on a sales order, 
this 49.65, we're going to use some of the things that we learned earlier to take a look at those. So if I go back to item maintenance, I should be able to determine where that 49.65 is coming from. And it looks like it's coming from this um, last cost, our total, because we're a FIFO item. So remember, our valuation comes into play first here. It's a FIFO item. So therefore, it's going to look and see what our last cost was for that particular FIFO item. One thing to keep in mind is the last cost on item, the main tab of item maintenance, is not the first place it's going to look for a cost. The first place it's going to look for a last cost is under the More tab and Vendors. So you'll see here we have a last cost for Airway. We have a last cost for Container. We don't have a last cost. Um, for this particular one. So it's going to use the last cost from right here, 49.65. So that's where that's coming from. So remember first, when you're looking for costing, to look at the item's valuation first, and then determine where that costing's from. And we went through that hierarchy, and you'll see it in the sheet you receive after the presentation. It'll show you what process stage goes through, what logic stage goes through, if this cost were zero. So if our last cost was zero, it's gonna go down that, that list of items and look for different costs, eventually getting to the standard cost if there's one there. So if all, all costs before it are zero, it'll eventually get to the standard cost and use that. So remember to take a look at that handout that you get to help you determine where that costing is coming from. One thing I wanted to mention on costing though, is it is possible to sell something before we have it in um, inventory. And you guys may have heard this term, but that cause, causes an over distribution of the item. So essentially it just means you sold this before you received it in and Sage may not know what the cost is for that particular one. So let's go ahead and look at one particular item here so that I can show you an example of that. So if I go to inventory management and I go to item maintenance, I'm going to look up my D1000-CD item. And when I look at that particular item and I go to my transactions tab, you're going to see that for my warehouse 001, my East Warehouse, on 531-2020, I sold four of these. And the cost that came through on that sale was $20. So when I look here, this is a FIFO item. It has no last cost. So it went and looked at the next tiers of costing to determine where to, where to get the costing from, the $20. And you'll see, see here I'm negative in my warehouse. So what will happen next is I will likely receive this item in. So in the real world, obviously in, in Sage world, they would like you not to sell something before you receive it in through purchase order. That's not reality. That doesn't always happen that way. And that's why this over distribution happens. But um, it, just so that you understand how it works. What would happen next is, let's say my purchase order, I have a purchase order out for that particular item. So let's take a look at that purchase order because I have it set up right now. Let's go to purchase order entry. We're gonna look at PO10070. So this is for airway property. When I look over here, it's for that particular item and I actually ordered four of them but the cost on them now is actually $25. So my vendor said, hey, the cost is $25. So what happens when I receive this in? Let's take a look. We're gonna go ahead and receive this purchase order in at the $25. So we're gonna receive purchase order number 10070. Let's say we receive the invoice with it also. <clears throat> When we go to the lines tab, we're going to receive the complete purchase order, $25 with an extension of $100. And when I accept this and print and post this at the appropriate date for my demo data, <clears throat> we'll take a look at the item and see what it looks like then and what happens. And we're going to say yes, we're going to update it. 
not going to run the daily transaction register right now just for time purposes, but it won't affect what we're looking at here. So now if I go back and I'm going to go off of this item and back onto it, we can take a look at our transactions and you'll see now, oh, and I even received it into the wrong warehouse. So I still have four in one and minus four in the other. But you'll see what happens is my costing was actually $100 and my pricing was actually $80. What happens with that difference is Sage doesn't, doesn't just say, hey, there's a difference here, what do we do? What it does is it creates an over-distributed tier. When you look at your cost detail, it'll, it'll create this over-distribution, meaning you sold it before you received it in. And so when you receive it in at the right cost, it has to do something with that difference, um, general ledger-wise. So what'll happen, you'll find when that happens is under the period end report, there's actually an op option called in inventory negative tier report and inventory negative tier adjustment. And what these tier reports and the appropriate adjustment show you is what was received or what was sold before it was received in and what was the cost impact. So what was the difference in the costing? So you'll see as you start to go through here that there's difference in costing and it's trying to show you what happened with each of those items in this over distribution. And then what will happen is you review that inventory negative tier report and you actually run this inventory negative tier adjustment and this makes the appropriate transactions related to that cost, those costing differences. So that's another thing to keep in mind if you don't recognize the cost that could have been from an over, -distribu over distributed tier and it'll make an appropriate adjustment for that. Now this one, um, this particular item that's showing up here right now is probably not showing any adjustment because of the type of inventory item it is. But if it's a FIFO or LIFO lot or serial item, it's actually going to show you, it's actually going to make a general ledger effect. So just keep that in mind. Now there's a couple things. Um, we're getting towards the end here, so I have a few more minutes and we'll go through some reports. Um, that can help you with pricing and costing, and then I'll open it up for any questions you may have. I don't see any questions coming through the chat at this time, but if you have any questions, let me know. So under reports, so there's a couple things. Under accounts receivable, there are some reports that can help you with pricing, and one of them is the customer the pricing report. Let's find it. Last one. AR customer pricing report. So this AR customer pricing report is going to show you, and I'm going to just go into the appropriate date, any pricing that's set up, and you can set some options in this report. So um, print only items and sales history, print product line information. You have some different options here. You can page break it by customer. And we're going to go ahead and review that. So rather than visiting the button, the customer pricing button in item maintenance, or even through customer more button, you can get to customer pricing. There's, you can view this in report format as well. So you'll see here, this is showing us for customer number ABF. Under this product line, we have this pricing under these items. And you can continue down in that way. And take a look at that report so that you can see your tiers and what's happening. You can run this, of course, for a specific customer or if you're just trying to investigate a specific specific customer. It'll also tell you that there's a sales promotion in play. So keep that in mind as well. If there's sales promotions, those may show up here also. And it'll also show you on here the price source. So like this is saying it's coming from a price code. This is coming from the standard price. So it'll try to identify for you where all this piece of information is coming from. And you can run this, of course, we have some customers or some clients who provide this to their customers. They give them this customer pricing report, so that's always an option as well. Additionally, under the inventory module, under reports, there is an inventory price list. And this inventory price list will show us a bunch of information. Oh, we can actually tell it to print the price schedule. I should have done that and I'll, I'll do that again in a second. But this will show you a retail price, standard price, and unit cost. But if I go back to this and tell it to show me the price schedules, it'll actually show all of that interactive information that we've seen with pricing 
um, related to customer price schedules and things. So you'll see here, here's our price level one, here's our standard. So we can get all the information on here that we need about these particular items and what pricing is related for those. So this can kind of help us evaluate. We can run this for just the particular item if that's what we're looking for and those kinds of things. So that'll help you. Additionally, if we have, um, if we want to look at the cost side of things, we can also look at the cost side under our inventory valuation report. So a lot of times that's where we're going to go to look for our costing side of, side of things. And you'll see we can tell it to print our costing detail. I usually like to show that up here. You can have it print zero costing tiers and zero balances. I'm going to say no zero balances. One um, nice feature of here is you can have it show print zero balances with quantity on order. So if it's on order, yes, show me the zero balances. If not, don't, which is kind of nice. We can run these by item code, product line. You can run it by a vendor, all of those kinds of things to try to help you um, determine the pricing or the costing in your of your inventory. So you see here under this particular item, we're seeing our receipt numbers, our receipt dates, our quantity on hand, and, and extending it all out for us by warehouse. So it'll show you pretty detailed information about the costing if you um, set it to do so on the report header. So if anyone has any questions, now would be the time to ask it. I think I've gone through everything that um, I had set to, to show you on this particular webinar. Of course, you can always reach out to your SWK consultant if you have any further questions or need any more clarification. If you get into a situation where you can't determine where a price or cost is coming from, and you've gone through some of the information here on from our webinar, you can certainly call our SWK help desk and a technician can help you figure out where the cost or price is coming from. And if you have, um, once you receive the information and if you have any questions on the handouts that are provided, you can certainly ask your SWK consultant as well. I'm gonna watch for a minute here, see if there's any questions or any questions come up in the chat. I'm not seeing anything so far, but if you do have anything, please let me know. I'm watching the chat right now. Just keep in mind, um, really, the hardest thing on the costing side or the most troubling thing on the costing side is usually that vendor pricing maintenance. And then the most troublesome to follow on the sales order side is when for costing on the costing side is when there's no cost in the appropriate place. So it's a it's a standard or it's a last cost or last in first out item, but there's zero in the last cost. Where does it go from there? Those seem to be the hardest things to follow and figure out where the costing is com coming from. And on the pricing side, the sales promotion usually gets people hung up. They get stuck on um, where's this coming from because they didn't realize a sales promotion was entered. Uh, and you know, of course, customer price schedules and how it works in conjunction with the price levels and price codes. As um, Sage, you know, Sage 100's pricing is pretty expansive and it's pretty detailed. So there's lots of places to set it up and ways to set it up, and that usually throws clients off as well when they're trying to determine where a price came from. Okay, so I guess we're gonna wrap up the webinar. I'm not seeing any um, any chats coming through with any questions. So like I said, if you do have any follow-up questions, once you review the documentation that you receive from the webinar, please feel free to reach out to us, to your consultant, to our help desk, um, whatever is most convenient for you. And thank you for attending our web webinar on Sage 100 item costing and pricing. And I hope you got some valuable information out of it.